Welcome to Explaining the Plays. I'm Uncorrupt, and I'm going to be taking us through some Mech Paladin games today with a focus on the fundamentals of Hearthstone. So uh, the first fundamental that I'm going to talk about is uh, just making sure that you know what you're looking for in the mulligan. So with Mech Paladin here, um, we're really just looking to curve out. We want to be able to spend mana, play minions, and uh, just develop a board presence that gets bigger and bigger over time. So looking at our options here... Um, I'm going to keep the Righteous Protector. We're against Warrior. It's likely going to be Control Warrior. And we'll just be able to chip away at the armor that they're trying to develop. And I'm actually going to toss... Um, Vindicator and Amalgam. Are we though? I'm going to keep the Stone Hearth Vindicator. In this deck, the Vindicator is a guaranteed draw for Radar Detector. And so we're going to be able to draw a lot of mechs off of the bottom of our deck. So against Control Warrior here, um, our general game plan is uh, just build a board presence. Um, we know they have shield shatters. That's fine. They're going to be able to clear our board. That's fine. It's actually a rogue. So we're still happy with our mulligan here. Mulligan doesn't really change a whole lot with Mech Paladin. And that's the reason why that I think it's a good deck to uh, to learn fundamentals and to just kind of practice fundamentals in the game. So um, first fundamental, know what you're looking for in the mulligan. Uh, these are the cards uh, that are going to give you the best chance of being able to win the game. And you really have to understand the game plan of the deck to know what you want in the mulligan. Again, for this, we just want to be able to curve out playing stuff on every turn. So um, the next fundamental that I would want to talk about is just spending our mana every single turn. So... Our goal is to be able to spend all the mana crystals that we have available. We don't want to leave anything left. The only way we can do that this turn is to hero power. Hero power for two mana is actually really weak. You don't ever want to just hero power. So uh, we are going to float one mana, but we're going to get this uh, prismatic jewel kit in play. This is going to buff the minions in our hand. And next turn, we're actually going to be drawing, hopefully, a lot of mechs that are going to be able to get buffed. So we know our opponent is rogue. They didn't do anything. There's the second Vindicator. So um, we want to be able to spend all of our mana crystals. And we really have two options here. So option one, Vindicator, and draw as many mechs as we can off the bottom five of our deck. Or Banner Man, we can draw one and buff everything in our hand. So because we have a Divine Shield minion and this Prismatic Jewel Kit um, already out, the best option is going to be to get this uh, Stonehearth Vindicator on the board. It's an additional power. It's going to draw more cards, which is going to mean more buffs off of this Divine Shield right here. So we're going to get our Radar Detector free, of course. And then we're just going to draw cards and make sure that we go face. So we actually drew five mechs off of that Radar Detector. Um, doesn't always happen. Just got lucky this game. So now when this Divine Shield breaks, which it's guaranteed to break, every single one of these minions is going to get buffed. And we see our rogue opponent is doing rogue things, so we're feeling pretty good so far. Um, <clears throat> it looks like they're not going to be popping this Divine Shield just yet, which is perfectly acceptable. And just kind of taking a look at our next turn, um, this first video is going to be focused about the things that, uh, that we're doing. We're just focused on our own gameplay. At least that's all I'm going to be voicing. And uh, we'll get into some other things. This is actually going to be a mini-series. There's going to be multiple parts. We're going to have multiple things to be able to talk about here. So just kind of thinking about my next turn. Again, I'm looking to spend mana. And they actually do buff every minion in our hand, which is great. So now the question is, um, how do we spend four mana? And what's the most powerful things that we can do? How can we put the most power on the board, the most minions on the board, the most board presence? So when we're playing this deck, we always want to maintain a very, very big board presence. Um, we don't really have comeback mechanics. Mech Paladin has no removal spells whatsoever. Uh, the only rush minions are the motherships, and as you can see, that's a six mana minion, so it's going to be a while before we can get to that. So we just want to make sure that we're developing the biggest possible board that we can every single turn. And again, I think that's a good reason why it's a deck that you can uh, just kind of practice. Practice the fundamentals of Hearthstone. So we're going to get the automaton out on the board. This minion gets bigger and bigger. It's a removal target. And then we're going to uh, actually discover an additional mech here. 
Um, Anoyatron is pretty good. That gives us a Taunt and Divine Shield. This makes everything Divine Shield. I'm going to grab the Bubble Bot here, and we're just going to push face. So our opponent really wants to be able to remove this Automaton. May have actually been better to just take the Anoyatron with that last turn. It gives us another Taunt, another Divine Shield to potentially be able to protect this. Created by here, we lost our automaton to a created by Awen the Guardian with a Tooth of Nefarian. <laughs> you gotta love Pile of Random Cards Rogue. Not sure that that's uh, necessarily good for the game of Hearthstone, but it is what it is. So, we are officially behind on board against our rogue opponent here. So the most powerful thing that we can do this turn, we can't remove any minions, but uh, we're going to put out our Ashara and Mooncatcher, and then we're going to dredge up the second copy. With some additional stats on it. So again, we're spending all of our mana. Make sure we pick the correct dredge card. We're going to get two copies of this, and they're actually going to be 7-5. So we have a Divine Shield minion in play. Again, that could potentially buff everything in our hand if the Divine Shield gets broken. And then we're going to draw a three mana minion that's going to give us two five fives. Or I'm sorry, two seven fives. And they make the trade. Push face. So Vessel is pretty good for him there, but our opponent is starting to run out of cards. This is actually like Omega strong for him now because they just put 12 power in play. Or they actually didn't put 12 power in play, so I'm not sure what they could have drawn that would be better than um, getting the other three threes on board, unless it was like a Mr. Smite. So um, you can see here with the deck, deck tracker, they have 14 damage. We really don't want to take 14 damage. So we could play like Automaton and Bubble Bot. That would give us a Divine Shield Taunt. Let's see. What else can we do? We really need to spend all of our mana. I mean, we could just play the Mothership and trade. And then the following turn, we would be able to... Uh, that's going to save us from taking that 5 damage. And then potentially there's two leftover mechs to be able to be taunted with the Bubble Bot here. So I think the play is to actually remove the spell power. So this is going to save us some damage in the long run, and we're trying to set up for a turn 7, which is going to be Sunken Moon Catchers and Bubble Bot. It's going to give us a lot of Divine Shields and a lot of Taunts. Which it looks like we're really going to need, because our opponent is pushing a lot of damage face here. A couple of Divine Shield mechs, um, that's a high roll for us. Because it just gives us additional targets for the bubble bot. So we're going to stick with the plan. And I'm actually going to make this trade first because uh, we're going to be getting our divine shields back. So we're going to hit there. We're going to get our now eight sixes down because they were buffed. And then we're going to bubble bot, which is going to divine shield and taunt all four of these minions. And then we need to decide, is it worth even taking a trade here? Um, I kind of think it's not worth taking the trade because we have so many Divine Shields and Taunts. We're just going to let our opponent make the trade, and we're going to take the face damage here in pass turn. So that's something that um, you have to get used to over time. Just because there is a trade on the board doesn't mean you take it. Our board is significantly stronger than our opponent's. We now have initiative, and that means that we're really looking to deal damage and close this game out. And as you can see, by doing that, we've set up lethal. We have 28 damage on board. They're going to have to remove some minions in order to not die next turn, and they should not be able to kill us this turn, no matter what they do. They do still have the spell power from the uh, Awen, but they would have to have two damage spells to be able to kill us, and they would have to be two Wicked Stabs. And I don't believe this version of Rogue Run's Wicked Stabs. I believe they have Double Tooth of Nefarium. You can see our opponent is already having to take trades here. They spent three mana drawing minions. We have a second bubble bot. Shadow Step Crab is, is pretty strong for him here. Uh -oh. 
So he's able to slow us down. Um, we know he has the crab in hand, but again, we're just going to do it again with the bubble bot. So eight mana. We have uh, four, six, seven. Um, none of these cards are mechs. They won't get divine shield. So we're going to end up floating a mana, but I think the most powerful turn is to get down our mechs and another bubble bot. So we're going to make sure we do it in the right order. Let's get the automaton out. And then we're going to play the click clocker next because it's going to buff this. The only mech left in hand. And then we're going to give everything taunt again with divine shield. And so now our opponent is likely just dead. We know they have the four mana crab. Um, unless they run scabs, I really don't think there's any way they're going to be able to beat this board. I don't think rogues are running the scabs hero card now. So again, we've just been spending mana. We've been setting up the biggest, strongest possible board that we could fighting for the board until it was no longer necessary. And then, you know, once we had these huge minions with divine shield and taunt, it was just no longer necessary to fight for the board. So pushing the face damage two turns ago was exactly the right thing to do. Things are going really well here. Again, we only lose to one card, and it's a card that I'm not even sure they run in this deck anymore. Feeling very good about our chances to win. They're going to dig with the Edwin again. There's nothing that they can find. This is just going to be a win. We're basically waiting for our opponent to concede at this point. comes a knoll here comes to the nefarian they're still trying to find something maybe they can find something that could stall the game I, I really don't think so nothing i can think of they would have to be able to freeze large portions of our board they did get a big edwin though and they finally concede so again um fundamentals let's know what we're looking for in the mulligan we want to spend our mana, building the biggest possible board that we can every single turn. And then we want to really analyze the trades. Do I have to trade or am I just wasting damage on the trade? Right back in for another game. We want to try to build on the things that we were talking about in the first game. If you're enjoying this video or finding it helpful, don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Taking a look at our hands here, our opponent is showing Hunter. Could be another rogue. Won't really know that for a turn or two. And uh, just trying to figure out what are the strongest things... Um, that we can do with our deck so a uh, prismatic jewel kit i think is a keep we don't have any divine shield minions in hand this does give us something to do on turn one then we could go into automaton turn two possibly vindicator on three i'd really like to have some taunt minions though i'm actually going to toss both of these and just keep the automaton specifically because i have the prismatic jewel kit in hand Ariel. Very, very good card to be able to have in our opening hand. This card is always a keep. Uh, it is seven mana, but it's still always going to be a keep. So, uh, we're just going to play the Jewel Kit. We could play the Righteous Protector first just to put the minion on the board. Um, there's a chance that the Divine Shield gets popped without buffing the minions that we have in our hand. Other option would be to just coin out the automaton. That would pretty much be a waste of the coin, though. The question is, which one of these do we do first? Do we value the minion on the board, or do we value the jewel kit? Take back what I said. I value the minion on the board. We spend all of our mana, and we develop board presence. Probably overthought it there. If we don't get the buff off of this, it's not that big a deal. We see our opponent is probably going to be Big Beast Hunter here. So I'm going to go ahead and get out our Automaton. And then I'm going to coin the Jewel Kit. So now, when this Divine Shield breaks, it's going to buff the two minions that we have in our hand here. Turn 3 is likely going to be spending our mana on the Gorilla Bot. It's going to depend on what we draw, though. Likely expecting that the Automaton survives... And it will. Three five is a bit intimidating, though. So the most powerful thing we can do is just spend all of our mana here. And we're going to take the Asharan Mooncatcher. It's another Divine Shield minion. 
Explosive sheet hurts our own board. And Sneeds is just, just too expensive. So ideally we would like to be able to dredge with the... Uh, Dredge up the Mooncatcher with the Seafloor Savior, but again, we want to spend all of our mana. Okay. This thing having Ramming Mount is... a bit annoying, so... We're just going to keep going. We're going to buff this guy. Eh, we'll grab another Asharan Mooncatcher. That Divine Shield is going to be good for us at some point. And... We're going to take a Leviathan. I'd really like to be able to take this trade, but... Um, the Ramming Mount is just going to chew us up. So our opponent, um, due to the ramming mount, they're just absolutely destroying us with this stupid little two drop because of the buff. It's really unfortunate. And we don't have a super great play with this as our top deck. Turn six is going to look a little bit better. This is going to buff minions in hand. We also have Carriel in hand, so we're not super worried about taking a lot of damage here. On turn 7, we'll have to choose between a Carriel and a Leviathan, just depending on what the most powerful play is going to be. It could actually be Leviathan, just to clear up the board a little bit more. But once the Carriel is down, we're only going to be taking half damage. This is still the issue right here. This this play uh, with them being able to get the ramming mount down was unfortunate. And they were able to give Kodo Bane Rush here. And you can see they don't really care about R11. So again, good job from our opponent being able to uh, being able to ignore the 1-1. That's definitely the right play. So we're just going to draw some mechs here. And you can see we'll be able to summon two copies of these now. Only two mechs. We're going to save the taunt, I think. Really just want to get more power on the board. And two four twos is better than, of course, one five three. Next turn likely is just going to be the Leviathan. Um, Hydralodon is insanely good for our opponents here. So it's kind of feeling like this is going to be a board state that we're not going to be able to come back from. We'll be able to remove the Hydralodon, but they're still going to have all of these three ones on the board. But we can remove the Hydralodon, and then we'll have uh, Cariel to remove if there's anything left. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make this hit. And I want to draw first, because I want more information about what's in my hand before I decide... Uh, what I want to dredge up. So I'm going to draw first. I'm going to soften up this guy for the carryal. I get the automaton. Hydralodon is the key target on the board right now. And I think we're actually just going to take this this taunt. So next turn we can carryal and drop the uh, little taunt with Divine Shield. That's going to give us a turn that will be able to spend all eight of our mana and it's going to give us a little extra protection with the Taunt and Divine Shield in play. I have to see how much trading our opponent is going to do here. There's an argument for them to just shove face with 15 damage. Unfortunately, they were able to revive the Hydralodon. So now if we play Cariel, I believe... All of these come back.
If all of this dies at the same time, do they all still come back? I actually don't know. If it all dies, I guess there's plenty of board space to resummon. I almost want to do it for science. Other plays we could make would be to play, let's see, three. I mean, the taunts aren't going to do us any good. We really just lost the game to the Hydrolodon being revived. Outside of that, we had a play. So, for science, we're going to see. I'm expecting all of these are going to revive because there is board space. And they do. So, we're going to have to swing the at the Hydrolodon here. So, pretty much this game is lost. There's no way we're going to be able to come back from this. We lost again to uh, the revive pet on the Hydrolodon. I think we, we handled the first one just fine, but we're not going to be able to win from here. I mean, it's just infinite minions for our opponent. And even once we kill this, we have no way to be able to do damage to the entire board here. We're just going to double check our draw to make sure, but uh, there's actually nothing we can do. And our opponents played the hero card as well. Ramming Mount on Selective Breeder was really good for our opponent. We were never able to deal with that minion until late in the game and the Revive Pet on the Hydrolodon. So if they didn't hit the Revive Pet on the Hydrolodon, I think we would have been okay. But this is going to be a loss. And one important note here, just because we lost the game doesn't mean that we misplayed. It doesn't mean that we did anything wrong. We spent our mana. We did the best things that we could do on each turn. Our opponent just had good cards, good strong plays of their own. So we're not mad about it. We just accept the loss and move on. And actually, safe in the knowledge that we played a good game and did pretty well. Straight back into another game. Our opponent is showing Warrior. We're going to take that at face value until we see otherwise. I'm going to toss the Banner Man. And we're just really going to look for uh, some mech plays here. So Warrior tends to not do anything, at least until turn 3, when they're going to want to play from the depths. Come on, bro. I thought I threw you away. Killed me. But we do find a turn one play, so we're going to spend all of our mana and pass turn. Again, we're not expecting the warrior to do a whole lot if it is a warrior until uh, they can play a From the Depths or possibly the Outrider Axe, the four mana weapon. So we're just going to curve out. Bubble Bot is a nice little pickup. And you can see that our buff from the Click Clocker actually landed on Automaton, which is perfect. So we're going to get down Mooncatcher, likely into Bubble Bot. Mooncatcher is coming down. We're going to be able to dredge up the uh, other half of this, which is going to be good. Question is, do we take the trade here? And I think the answer is no. Our opponent is going to make the trade for us. We're going to just push this damage face. I always like to squelch my opponent. Most of the time it doesn't bother me. Sometimes it does, so why take the chance? Pretty quick choice off of From the Depths. And uh, we're just going to get the Bubble Bot down. I mean, it's going to be um, Divine Shield and Taunt on everything. Question is, I mean, I could make this trade first and then get down the Bubble Bot, so then there's no minion on the board for our opponent to be able to remove the Divine Shield with. And I think that might actually be a thing. We want a Divine Shield on as many minions as possible because we know the Warrior is going to want to play their Shield Shatter. If we have Divine Shields up, they have to use two Shield Shatters or they just can't clear our stuff, so I'm actually going to make the trade this time for those reasons. And then we're going to push this damage, so most of the minions on the board have Divine Shield here. Kind of puts our opponent in a bit of an awkward spot. They are now dredging up three cards. Four cards in their hand. Not necessarily free, but we know four cards in their hand are going to be discounted because of From the Depths. They took a snap pick, and then they didn't play it. Which makes me think the other two picks were maybe not as good. We'll have a good trade on this. They're actually dredging up a card that they just sent back down to the bottom of their deck, so we're not too worried about that. We know our opponent's going to gain armor, that's just the way Warrior plays. 
I tend to like this matchup just because they struggle with so many divine shield minions. And you can see, so they were able to uh, remove our 4 4. We could actually kill both of his taunt minions and just play another bubble bot and put divine shield right back on everything. Our opponent only has four cards in hand, that's good news for us. So, options here. It would mean floating a mana, but we can trade for his two taunt minions. Actually, we can't without... If we play this first, there would no longer be a divine shield. We need this to go to five attacks, so... Um, I believe the play here is actually going to be Bannerman and Seafloor Savior. It spends all of our mana and we'll be able to fish up the Sunken Mooncatcher with the most possible stats on it. Really? It's not too heavy. And that's going to give us the buff we need over here as well. So Sunken Mooncatcher is getting a nice little 3-3 buff. We're just going to make our trades here as we have to do because our opponent has taunt minions. So our board is really vulnerable now to shield shatter. Our opponent already has the armor that they need. We're expecting to lose this board. That It's just going to happen. Um, he's going to lose his Finley as well. If there is no shield shatter, then likely it's going to be uh, Amalgam and Bubble Bot to get the Divine Shields back on our board. And interestingly enough, They don't have it. So now the question is, do we take the value trades again? All of his minions will be able to remove the divine shields. Or do we just not want to miss the damage? Needs actually gives us some removal in case they're able to play at Nelly to get a taunt in the way, assuming our board survives. I think I'm just going to Divine Shield and Shove Face. One Shield Shatter clears that entire board, though, so maybe not. We can take some value trades here. We can do this. We can do this. This actually saves a minion. It can't get Divine Shield anyway. Then we're going to buff and we're going to actually push this damage base. This just makes it harder for our opponent to be able to clear the board. We're still expecting a Shield Shatter to be coming down. If they had it, they would have played it last turn. But we're kind of hedging our bets here. Um, just to make sure that there's no way we can possibly lose. Against Warrior, we want to maintain the Divine Shields. We're spending our mana. He's going to have to take 4 damage to be able to draw a card. He doesn't have any armor. We actually just have lethal on the board. We have some big Divine Shield minions coming up. Our opponent continues to draw cards. But even if he hits Frozen Buckle or Shield Shatter, he's only removing 1-5-5. and likely only delays the inevitable for one turn. There's the buckler. Shield shatter, single target removal. Okay, so they had both shield shatters. Both shield shatters are now gone. They could still run Brawl. They're drawing a metric ton of cards here, it looks like. And uh, again, just being able to use all of our mana, it's going to be best to get out these and the uh, and the taunt. This guy gets a little bit bigger as well. And we're just going to go ahead and throw the 1-1 one, one out. So the hit there didn't do anything. They were going to lose that... Uh, I'll take that back. They only played one... Uh, they only played one Frozen Buckler. It was two Shield Shatters. Here's Rikara gets the uh, the big 
big heal here. And we take some damage. Oh, it's exact lethal on the board. He's at 19 and we have 19, so... Let's make sure we count our damage and check for lethal as well. Another Hearthstone fundamental. That's going to do it for part one of the series, guys. Listen, keep in mind, know what you're looking for in the mulligan. You can find mulligan gods all over the internet. Maybe I should try to come up with some way to have mulligan gods for a lot of different decks. Maybe YouTube shorts. I'm going to start looking into that. That sounds like a good idea. Know what you're looking for in the mulligan. Spend all of your mana every single turn making the most powerful plays that you can, that you uh, possibly can. Develop your board presence, maximum tempo, and uh, don't forget to check for lethal every single turn. I'm Uncorrupt. Thank you for watching. Good luck out on the ladder.